They're a part of the family that can't be left behind. Innocent animals caught in the cycle of domestic violence. In her ongoing investigation into the depths of domestic abuse, Contact 13's Darcy Spears examines how abusers sometimes use pets as pawns and how you can fight back. There are many, and it was horrible, many voices. Yeah, he would hide and be scared from him. Of domestic violence. He killed my dog first, and then a month later, that's when he tried to kill me. Some victims can't say what happened and can't get away. Say hi. <laughs> I think she likes you too. <laughs> the joy in this cuddle room. Oh, and thank you, and thank you, thank you for the kisses. Is a stark contrast to the memories Seneca has of an abusive marriage where she wasn't the only victim of violence. And grabbing the dogs and hanging them out the window, he broke my other dog's leg. Animals are often the victims of domestic abuse themselves, but they're also used by abusers to hold victims hostage, to threaten, harass, intimidate, and even keep people from leaving an abusive relationship. When Seneca finally fled, she slept in her car until she found Shade Tree and Noah's Animal House, the only domestic violence shelter in the state that takes pets. They are just as, you know, valuable as my life is. You know, I, I mean, I love them just as much as I love my own children. And I couldn't stand to see if something bad was to happen to them. I would never forgive myself. Stand, come on. Donna and Dobby. There you go. Have been together for 13 years. Can we live treat? It's a relationship that's lasted much longer than the one she escaped. So he's getting a lot more open to people. Yeah. But he still gets a little scared because of the abuse, because he would hit him and he would push him off the bed. He got jealous of him. So when a detective gets a case. Detective Sandra Southwell with Metro's recently created Animal Cruelty Unit is working to raise awareness about pet abuse as a predictor of violence against people. The animals can often be used to control the victim. She steers victims toward Noah's Animal House, which all involved say isn't nearly enough. Right now we're at 150 percent of capacity for women and children. We're at 125 percent of capacity for pets. But when it's a victim, we can't say no. Shade Tree Director Marlene Richter says between 35 and 40 pets a day in Las Vegas are being rescued from domestic abuse, and many have to go to animal shelters. She wants to see more pets included in court protective orders. We need to make that easier. We, may, we need to have that as a standard. 71% of women seeking safety in shelters reported their abuser threatened, injured, or killed their family pet, but only two 2% of domestic violence shelters in the U.S. offer some form of pet services. Richter says doing more to bridge the gap is crucial. I have watched as the children sit with their pets in the lobby and they're crying on, the, on their pet and they're, and they're waiting and petting their, their best friend and hoping that this is going to be the time that it all ends. There are currently no laws that protect the pets of domestic violence survivors, but there's a move to change that on the federal level. The Pet and Women's Safety Act should hit Capitol Hill this fall. And if you'd like more information on that, you can go to our website at KTNV.com. Darcy Spears, 13 Action News. Shade Tree, by the way, is set to open a second Noah's Animal House in northern Nevada next spring, but they need your help. That's why they're asking that when you shop for your own pet, shop for theirs too. You can learn how on our website as well. Just go to KTNV.com.